Welcome back to the Malt Miller YouTube channel, home brewers. And in this video, we're gonna be brewing a Munich Hellers and we're gonna be brewing it on the Brew Tools B40. you're tuning into this video so that you can learn even more about the awesome Brutals brewing systems, then first and foremost, I suggest that you check out the awesome in-depth review that we did on that product right here. But as well as that, we're also today gonna to be using the Brutals Mini Uni Uni Tank to ferment this beer in. We've also got an in-depth review of that, which I'll put up here as well. So check out those other videos as well as this one to learn everything you need to know about these two fantastic products. Now, to start with, let's talk a little bit about the Brew Tools B40 that we're gonna be using today to brew our beer. Now, we absolutely love this product. It's super powerful with a 3.2 kilowatt element, and you can brew batch sizes of up to 40 liters in it, making it really versatile for the brewer. And we're gonna come on to a little bit of that later as we get into our brew. Also, you've got a fantastic touch screen on the front for full control and the very, very clever three-way valve setup that Brutals have developed to give you loads and loads of flexibility for this system. Now, the way we think about the, Br the Brutals brewing systems is that actually, rather than being similar to some of the all-in-one brewing systems that are available, this is almost like a compacted version of a three vessel brewing system. It offers a huge amount of adaptability and Brutals are wonderful at crafting a range of accessories to go along with it and listening to the innovations that you, the users may well want and looking to implement them. So it's a hugely versatile system. And as I previously said, it's very powerful. So I'm really looking forward today to brewing this beer. But before we come onto the recipe, we're gonna move over and just touch on the mini uni and why we're gonna be using in this to ferment our beer. Now the Mini Uni offers the user the option of being able to include the pressure system that Brutals also produce for it. And that's really important because that means that we can ferment our beer under pressure, thus speeding up our fermentation time, and also being able to naturally carbonate this beer throughout the fermentation, which is something that I'm really keen to take advantage of, again, for this wonderful recipe that we've come up with to brew today. Coming on to the recipe that we're gonna be brewing today, it's gonna to be a Munich Hellas, and it's perfect to get into your fermenter at this time of year, ready for the slightly warmer months that we're gonna be hitting as the spring approaches. And we absolutely love a Munich Hellas here at the Malt Miller. It's one of our favorite lager styles and it fits perfectly into the spring. So what we're gonna be doing today is using the Brew Tools B40 to do a step mash on our recipe so that we can really unlock all of the malt flavor and character and also the fermentable sugars from our malt. We're gonna be looking to create a beer that's gonna be a starting gravity of around 10.45 and we're aiming to finish our gravity at about 10.10, thus ending in a beer that's gonna have around about a 4.6 ABV, which is wonderful because it's nice and sessionable, but it's also gonna have plenty of body and character left in the beer. The malts we've chosen for that come from Vyman. We're gonna be using their Pilsner malt for our base malt. And we've got four and a half kilos of that. And then to add a little bit of additional character, we're gonna be using one of the Munich style malts from Vyman, and we're gonna be using Munich one. And the reason I've chosen that is because it's a lower color and it's not gonna to impart too much in the way of character, but it is gonna give us a wonderful, subtle, underneath, multi-tone to the beer. The hops we've chosen to use, we're using a single variety and it's Saphir, which is a hop that we introduced recently to the range. Actually, it is wonderful. It's gonna give us some subtle floral notes on the top end and a lovely bitterness throughout the beer. So it's gonna to aim to be a really, really drinkable beer at the end. And the yeast we've chosen to use is Einstein from WHC, which is one of our favorite versatile uh, lager yeast because it's quite forgiving. So actually we're not gonna have temperature control on the Mini Uni. It's quite cold at the moment, but if the temperature in our warehouse does fluctuate slightly, actually under pressure, 
Einstein's gonna be able to cope with that perfectly well. Now moving on to the mash steps we're gonna be using. We're aiming to dough in at 55 degrees to do our initial rest. Then after 30 minutes, we're gonna ramp it up to 66 degrees for our main mash period. Now that process combined is gonna help us unlock all of the fermentables within our malt and thus give us the best efficiency and also add to the character that we're gonna get in the finished beer. Once we've completed those two mash steps, we'll have a mash out of 75 degrees and then we're gonna move on to the boil. I'm gonna be taking full advantage of the capacity in the Brutals B40 today, because we're gonna be brewing a 23 litre batch. Now, what we're gonna be doing is actually, we're not gonna sparge on this method. We're gonna use the full capacity of the B40 to use our entire water volume. And then as we progress through the brew, I'm gonna do a couple of things to make sure that we really get the best from our malt. So stick around. And now what we're gonna do is flip things round, move over to where our brew school is and get set up for brew day. Okay, so we flip round to the other side so we can be next to our brew school where we've got all our running water and supplies. I've filled up the B40 with around about 34 litres of total water and I've been busy getting all set up and heating our water to 60 degrees. Now we're aiming for a mash of 55 degrees to begin with. So I've heated the stripe water up a little bit higher than that because it's very cold. The grain's gonna be colder than that so I'm very quickly gonna lose some of that heat. The other thing I have done is whilst we've been heating, we've also had the pump recirculating liquor all the way through the chiller and through the other components of the B40 to get it all up to a nice consistent temperature so that during our mash, we're not gonna see a massive crash in temperature as we start to recirculate. Now, just a note on water treatment. We've got 34 litres of total water in our B40 and I've added water treatment chemicals to get to the profile that we want for lagers and pilsners. Now that's gonna vary for everybody. What we've done is we've used sodium metabisulfate to remove chlorine. Then we've added AMS to bring our alkalinity into check. And then we've also added some calcium chloride. Now yours will differ. And if you wanna find out exactly how you need to treat your water for different beer styles, take a look in the description below where I've linked to our Murphy & Sons water report that you can get via our website. Okay, so we are up to pretty much where I need to be for our strike temperature. So I'm gonna cut the power to both the elements and the pump. And the reason I wanna do that is because I don't wanna be doing any recirculation whilst I'm mashing in. Now I've got our two bags of grain here. We're gonna start by doing in our 500 grams of Weimann Munich malt. I'm gonna get that in first. Give it a really quick stir. And now I'm gonna go in with our four and a half kilos of the wonderful Bohemian Pilsner malt from Weimann as well. Now, as whenever we're going in on any system, we're gonna do this in a couple of stages, give it a good stir, come back, add some more in, taking our time just to make sure that we don't end up with any dough balls or anything that you know could cause us a problem during the mash. Now we're fully doughed in with our recipe. I'm really pleased because our water calculations have come in spot on. It took a couple of minutes for the temperature to drop from that 60 degree that we'd originally dialed in down to 55, but I'm more than happy that where we are where we need to be. I've added the recirculation pipe in. I've set the uh, side valve in between the two settings at around about the five o'clock position. That means that we're recirculating through the chiller coil back into the B40. So we're flowing past the elements, but also we're recirculating through the mash as well. Now after 30 minutes, I'm gonna come back because I'm brewing in manual mode, dial the temperature up to 66 degrees. Once we've reached that, we're gonna have a full hour at that temperature, followed by a 15 minute mash out. So we've hit the end of our mash steps and we've lifted the grain pipe out. And all I'm doing now is just a little bit of additional recirculation just to clear down the work because the process of lifting the grain basket out has just disturbed the grain bed a little bit, but I'm sure this is gonna clear up. And that's actually one of the things I've been so impressed with so far during this brew. Now the two things that really stand out, first is how clear the wort has become throughout the whole process of the mash, and secondly, just how quickly we've been able to get to the different mash temperatures throughout the process. Now we've set 
the Brutals B40 to ramp up to 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna carry on this recirculation for a few more minutes before I cut that and allow the mash to completely drain through. And then we're gonna move on to the boil. Now we're just coming up to our second hop addition that's going into the boil. Now, just a note on the first hop addition, I added it at 95 degrees, which is something I practice quite often. And the reason for that is because it just helps with the hot break to disperse that hot break, minimize the risk of a boil over by breaking the surface tension on the top of the boil. As I added the first dose of Saphir hops from Bath Hass, the aroma was absolutely outstanding. Loads of floral notes, subtle tea notes, really, really delicate. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this hop shines in the finished beer. Now it was 50 grams we added at the first point, and that's because the alpha acid's fairly low. So to build up those IBUs, we needed a relatively large charge. Our second hop addition is gonna be 25 grams. And then we've got a further hop addition towards the end of the boil, which is 20 grams. And that's gonna leave some of that lovely floral note that we've found from the hops in the finished beer. Now this is my favorite part of brew day because it's all about being on the home stretch. I've got half an hour left on the boil after this. Then I've got to chill the work down, transfer it into the fermenter. So for me, this is a time when I get on with all of those other jobs that have built up and I've still got left to do. Like cleaning the grain basket down, getting rid of the malt from the mash, getting my fermenter ready to receive our lovely chilled down work once it's ready. Okay, so there's our timer to add our second hop addition. So I'm just gonna tap the screen to silence the alarm. Add the 25 grams of Saphir into the boil, and I'm just gonna tap on the timer and set my next timer, which is gonna be for 15 minutes, because that's when I wanna add my protoflock into the boil. Now we've come to the end of our boil. We added our protoflock and our yeast nutrient, and that last five minute addition of the wonderful Saphir hops. We've hooked up the counterflow chiller. I've set that going to now bring the temperature of the wort down. We're recirculating back into the kettle for this. Once I'm down to a temperature of around about 15-ish degrees, I'll then transfer the wort into the Mini Uni, pitch our Einstein yeast from WHC, and then because this is gonna be a grain to glass video, stick around, because after fermentation, we'll be trying the beer to see just how we've got on. So James, what have you got me out here for? What have you been up to? Well, I thought you'd really appreciate this, Martin, because inside the Mini Uni here is a Munich Hellers that I brewed a few weeks ago using the Brutals B40. Nice. Now, it was a bit of a um, delving into the world of Brutals experiment for me because it's a system that I've only used a handful of times. So I really wanted to put it through its paces. I did a step mash. I did full volume, no sparge as well. So it was kind of like, okay, what can I actually do on this system that I haven't tried before? And just trying to push the boundaries a little bit. Yeah, because it's a bit of a larger size to your G30 that you use at home, isn't it? It is, so yeah, it's yeah. Different, yeah. And, and I took advantage of that extra capacity to brew a 23 litre batch and not sparge it, right? And specifically to see what would happen if I did that. Now, it was a really interesting brew day. I learned loads about brewing on the brew tool system that day, specifically doing the full volume um, side of it as well. There was a couple of things that really stood out for me. Now, I'll talk a little bit about the brew day, but then I'll talk about fermentation in that as well. On the brew day itself, I was aiming for a specific gravity of 1045 with a 23 litre batch. What'd you get? I got 1053. Banging. I know, right? I mean, 1053, that almost like eight points over well, that just goes to show the efficiency that you can get out of that system when you're doing the recirculating mash um, and just like taking your time with it. But also I think it had something to do with that step mash as well, like really making sure that I unlocked the fermentables yeah. by doing the, the different steps. How long was your mash that you did? So I did a 30 minute um, protein rest. So I know that's a little bit longer, but I really wanted to make sure that it was, you know, really well done. And then I moved on to a 60 minute um, main mash and then I did a 10 minute mash out. And the main body of the mash, I mashed at 66 degrees. So I wanted to leave some 
residual body in there. I wanted to leave that lovely malt sweetness, um, which leads me on to fermentation. So I've been fermenting in the mini uni, yeah. under pressure. It's been three weeks, just over three weeks since brew day. Okay, so this is still quite young, which is why we're gonna serve it out of the mini uni today to see how we've got on. Ideally, I would leave it for a few more weeks to really like homogenize lager condition, right? Yeah. But that's uh, done with no temperature control in this, isn't it? No temperature control. I mean, it's been cold. We are in February, so it has been cold, but yeah, there's been temperature fl fluctuations throughout that period of time. Nothing too high. I think probably the highest it's got up to in the warehouse is maybe 13 or 14. But because we've fermented under pressure, we haven't really had to worry about that too much. Um, and I had the spunding valve set to around about 20 PSI for the majority of that fermentation process. And I tried the beer throughout just to make sure that I was happy with where the carbonation was getting to. Yeah. And actually I've ended up with something I'm really, really pleased with, okay? We'll come on to tasting it in a moment, but I guess you probably wanna hear about ingredients. Yeah, tell me about the recipe that you've done. Yeah, so I, I, as I said, I did a step mash and the malts that I used for uh, the mash were Vimans, floor malted Bohemian Pilsner. Classic, classic. I know, it's one of your favorites, yeah. right? Perfect for Czech, it's yeah. perfect for German Hellas. Yeah, so I then used um, uh, some Munich One in there as well from okay. Vyman. I think it was, uh, I'll just double check, yeah, 500 grams. So it's five kilos total grain, 10% of which was that Munich malt. And again, that's just brought into the color and like the work at the end of the day looked really, really cool, really nice color. So that was the um, the grain bill. So you've not put any dextrin or carapils in no, there? No, nothing, okay. just just those two, nice and simple. Keep it really simple, because I want it to be, I want malt sweetness and presence there, but I also want it to be drinkable and sessionable to a degree, although the ABV is gonna be a little bit higher now. Uh, the hot choice that I went for was Saphir. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know, right? Um, actually, this bit of a call out to our friend Richard Williams over at Dude's Brews, because uh, he recommended that hop. It's in one of his award-winning, uh, recipe kits that we've got, uh, Smells Lagery. Um, I love that it, beer. It's great, I've right? i that recipe a couple of times myself. Yeah, um, but that hop, that Saphir hop, it's just got that lovely sort of floral note, slight tea notes when it's in the in the boil as well. It's yeah, really nice hop, really nice. And then fermented with, you know, our favorite lager yeast at the moment, which is WHC, yeah, WHC yeah. Einstein, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the that was the brew. Just a note on fermentation. I've got nothing particularly to to call out. Fermentation went swimmingly. Yeah, just letting it sit and do its thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it finished at um, about 10, 11, 10, 12, um, which is where I was aiming for. Like I said, I wanted to have that little bit of extra body left in the beer, but not like not too high. Okay. So um, I guess now it's a case of actually pouring some beer. See how we got on. I thought you'd never get on with it, come on. <laughs> right, to serve the beer out of the mini uni, I've attached one of the Kegland uh, flow control disconnects. And you just adjust that on the top, because I've not used one of these yet. Yeah, it's just like a little dial on the top, huh. um, similar to some of the like stainless steel ones that we've sold in the past, but really super simple, and very effective, perfect for this kind of setup, okay? Or if you were maybe having a keg to take away somewhere on, on you know, a holiday or something like that. Um, and then we've just got a party tap, length of line. So we're gonna see how we get on. Now I've already just like made sure that I'm happy with the flow rate. So I'm gonna pour you some beer first. That's looking pretty bright, James, considering you moved it from where you were having it ferment over onto the table. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? There you go. That's for you. Oh, mouthful. <laughs> you can have some more. It is Friday, man. It is Friday, but it's still the morning. Okay, there we go. So, two glasses of beer. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go in, have a little look at it. I mean, like you say, it is pretty bright. Now, uh, I, ideally, I would probably be now looking to transfer this into a keg and then leave it in the um, in the kegerator for a few weeks just to sort of settle down a bit more, maybe add some findings. But, I mean, already, that's really bright, isn't it? The rouse would just crispen it up slightly more. Yeah. That's got a beautiful head on it. Yeah, yeah, great head. Carbonation level's good. <laughs> Ready. Ready. Ready, but also like slight, slight floral tone there as well from the hops. I mean, there's no dry hop, obviously, but you do put a fairly late boil addition in. 
It's got that beautiful yeasty ester that you yep. really want on halas and lagers. Yeah, but no, um, like not too sulfurous or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, it's not, you're not getting whiffs of diac on it. No. Can I taste right. it now? Yeah, of course you can. In we go. Oh man, that's velvety. That head as it hits your tongue and the back of your mouth. Oh. That is, that's and then it just finishes out so dry and crisp. Yeah, and bready and like there is malt sweetness, but like you say, there's just enough bitterness to kind of dry it back out. It's, um, yeah, very pleased with that. Yeah. It's still just beautiful. I'm getting that lovely, um, like we said, bready sweet notes, but also like touches of honey in there as well from the malt, right? From that wonderful floor malted Bohemian Pilsner malt, complemented with the Vitamin Munich One. I think the color I'm really pleased with. I think your step, step matching will really have helped on that as well. Mate, that is absolutely banging. Wonderful, I'm, I'm, that is high praise indeed coming from the master of lagers over there. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased you're enjoying it. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super pleased with that. And as an experiment for me of, of like throwing myself into brewing on the brutal systems, both fermentation and brew day, very pleased with how that's gone. Very pleased. So it's a real different piece of kit to what you're used to brewing on at home. Much more involved. Yeah. Did you really enjoy and kind of find that? I did, yeah. So I've brewed a few times now on like three vessel systems. You know, we've made some videos about brewing on three vessel systems, brewed on loads of different all-in-one systems now as well. And um, for me, brewing on the brew tools was like the best of both worlds. So I, I was involved, I was brewing in manual as well. So I was having to make sure that I was like adjusting the mash temperatures, you know, adding my hop additions, setting timers, all the, all the sort of stuff that you would do when you're brewing manually. I, I really enjoyed that immersive experience and I was playing around with it as well. But when I was um, lifting the grain bed, I was obviously not doing any sparge, but I actually did some recirculation. So I lifted the grain bed up, set it to recirculate so that I was clearing- the Filter. Yeah, yeah, clearing the wort um, and heating up as well to come up to, you know, close to being a boil temperature. Um, and that was a really like interesting thing to be able to do because you've got the capacity and you've got the way that that, um, you know, the, the center um, recirculation pipe works all the way up whilst yeah. it's at the grain baskets actually sat on top of the system. So that was really interesting. So it was involved like you would be on a three vessel, but it was also simple and familiar for me who I generally brew on an all in one, yeah. you know? So like I said, it was a really, really cool brew, brew day and I'm becoming more and more um, inspired to try different things now on the brutal systems and, and also put in, you know, the mini uni to task a little bit more as well and brewing more lagers and you know as the temperature warms up try and rebrew this recipe potentially but with absolutely zero temperature control and see just how it performs under pressure then as well so yeah it was really interesting great I guess fun i guess that's really one of the benefits of the brew tools is that you can bespoke the system how you want to brew it yeah you know change your valve setup yeah have it all set up and built out the way you want it trick it out however you like there's loads of different configurations that's what's great about it you can tinker you can go to town and really customize it to suit your brewing yeah, method build your own system yeah yeah on a, on a very 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 stable platform right yeah. um that just works so yeah really good the power of the elements as well moving between your different um mash steps and then coming up to a boil that really stood out for me. Yeah, because it's, it's a really big, powerful element in there, like 3.2 kilowatts, so very cool indeed. Anyway, I'm very pleased that you are enjoying the beer. Am I gonna have to pour you even more? No, I think I might take a bit more when we finish filming and go and sit and enjoy it at my desk. <laughs> no, thank you very much for asking me to come and taste this, James. Really appreciate it. Really excited to see what you've achieved with the Brutal system. Nice one, thanks, Martin. Cheers. I hope you've enjoyed watching this journey for me where I've gone from grain to glass using entirely Brutal's equipment. I've really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic, great fun. I've learned loads about the system, but I've also produced a beer that I'm incredibly proud of. Martin, thank you so much for uh, giving me your critique of the beer. I'm glad you're enjoying it. If you've got questions or comments for me or indeed for Brutal's, please drop them down in the comments section below. We will get back to you and let you know. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date with everything we're doing here at Maltmiller HQ. And as always, have a great brew. Cheers. Cheers.